well, let's get started here. Hope yeah. everybody's excited because today we're making bagels. Um, we're going to start this morning and we're just going to make the dough and then we're going to do what we had done before, which is all the stretch and folds um, throughout the, the morning. And then we're going to shape them into bagels in the afternoon. And then we are going to um, bake them tomorrow. Do you want to help with that? You just let me say this. You could have just let me do it and kept going. There you go. That's what you're looking for? Sure. All right. Cool. Um, all right, so I'm gonna be speaking of stand mixer. I'm actually gonna be using a stand mixer. This recipe specifically calls for like, putting in a stand mixer. I think that you don't really need to because there's nothing special about this. Like there's like, you know, Josh had said, you know, with butter and sugar and milk and stuff like that, you might need it, but um, I don't think you need to. So if you don't have a stand mixer, feel free to do this by hand, but I'm taking the stand mixer out today. Um, so checking out this recipe, I got it from uh, baking sense. Dot com it was recommended to me by a couple people um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our starter water and flour some of our flour together in, uh, in a bowl and mix that up so uh, let's get started with that the first thing I want to point out though is that there's something really interesting about this recipe which is she's given the recipe in terms of volume and in terms of weight so uh, like it says four and a half cups of bread flour and then 300, 630 grams. I just weighed out four and a half cups. I did not come up with a number anywhere close to that. So <laughs> that's why it's important to do things by weight you can. Um, all right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, two, cups of, two cups of the flour. Actually, let's see. I'm gonna start with the starter first. I'm gonna start with my starter first. So you get your starter, hopefully it's risen overnight. It's mine. And I'm gonna put one cup, or it says about 224 grams of starter into my bowl. So let's do that. So I get my scale over here. And so he put, turned on the scale, put the bowl on the scale, and then hit tear to go to zero. Actually, you know what? Actually, this is a great point. I totally forgot. If you haven't put anything in your bowl yet, weigh your bowl, because we're actually going to put that number later. So I'm going to weigh my bowl and write that down. There's no words. This is where you're going to be working. David, should I be concerned if my starter is super liquidy? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. I mean, you're doing, I think that's Amherst talking, right? Amherst, yeah. you're doing it by weight. So you're going to be a little bit like not quite as exact. I think that's fine if it's pretty liquidy. Mine's pretty watery in the uh, right here. Let's see if you can see it's like you know, okay. all around. But um, oh, yeah. And actually, <laughs> Lizzie had asked a question this morning about um, what happens if your starter doesn't pass the flow test. Mine probably won't pass the flow test right now. I didn't try it, but um, I can actually see on the jar that mine rose overnight and then collapsed. It's kind of one of the things about that happens when you do it overnight, uh, but it's fine. It'll pick back up as soon as it starts eating the flour I'm going to put in now. David, what if I just put in 180 grams into my bowl, yeah. but I'm worried I'm not going to have enough to kickstart again yeah and then i'd say leave some, uh you know in your in your jar that you want to use next week you should you need probably like four or i mean you really only need like a tablespoon just to keep to keep it going yeah so you said 224 grams of starter yep 224 or one cup we're gonna measure on They don't need to hear this clank. Hey Dave, what's the consistency of your starter? Yeah, so let's see. I don't know if you can see mine right now. It's like pretty aerated. Um, let's see. Bloop. So it looks like that. Okay. Um, let's say it's like, I don't know, it's pretty doughy. It's got some uh, like strands of it. So I'm not happy with it. It's a good starter. Wow, that don't that used almost all of it. Yeah, I can see what you're saying, Lizzie. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I, I have, thought, um, I'm only putting in two hundred and six grams. Is that okay? So yeah, leave sure, sure, definitely. You know? Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Um, all right. You know, I'm getting back to this. Got that in the bowl, and I'm gonna add two cups of flour. So I measured out my two cups of flour here. Um, so you if you're doing this by weight, throw in like three hundred grams right now. Yeah. 
How many grams of flour did you say? Uh, 300. So with this recipe, we actually mix half of the flour in now and half of it in later. So I'm saying she calls her uh, 630, so I'm saying about 300 right now is good. I'm going to grab some water now. So now I need uh, 630. This is funny. She put 630 milliliters. The funny thing about the metric system is 630 milliliters is 630 grams, which is very nice. So I'm going to get three, 300, I'm oh, sorry, 360 grams of warm water. I'll be right back. So you're aiming to get 360 grams of warm water about 100 degrees, but it yeah, doesn't. Yeah, do a less than that. A little like, less is fine. Like 90 or 80, something like that. How much flour again? It was 300 grams? About 300 grams, yeah, of flour. And then 360 grams of warm water. How many grams? I have the water running. 360. Of water. Of water. OK. I want to get all this it's all this water. Are other people adding the water and mixing yet? Uh, we're still measuring over here. <laughs> okay. We're, we're scaleless, so we're, we're going by volume. Cool. Sounds we're, good. We're fast. <laughs> All right. So I've got my water. I'm just going to throw that in there. Okay, so the water goes on. All right. Now, feel free to mix this by hand with a mixer, with a dough hook, whatever you've got. I got the KitchenAid sitting out here, so I'm just going to use this. Um, the goal is we're not going to have to like knead this or anything at the moment, right? We're just kind of trying to mix it all together. So I'm actually going to use this little attachment instead. I'm going to put me on mute for a second. I'm just going to put it on mute so that way you don't have to hear my stand mixer go. All right, so you get that mixed up. I'm gonna just scrape down the sides. So the point of this, this is called the uh, auto lies phase here. And so the idea is we're just gonna get all of the water and all the flour integrated and get it all nice and uh, hydrated. So it's gonna be pretty, mine's pretty soupy looking right now and that's fine because we're gonna end up adding in a lot more flour later on. That'll make it um, thicker. So look at that. Just scrape down the side of the bowl. You're gonna make sure you get all that flour wet, hydrated. Dave, should it be pretty smooth? Um, sure. Yeah, it would be smooth. I, I guess uh, mine's looking. So let's see. I think Jenny maybe is zoomed in on mine. Um, so you can see what mine looks like. It's pretty soupy, right? Pretty, pretty watery, pretty smooth. I'm just going to get that all scraped down. Cool. That's that. All right. All right, 
1014. So at this point, you can leave this thing to sit and soak for half an hour, an hour. Um, I might do just like 20 minutes or so here just to keep things moving. Um, if you want to, so I'm just going to stay on here for the next 20 minutes. I'm going to answer some questions and talk about stuff. Um, but if you have other things you want to do, feel free to drop off and just come back at, what is, would that be, 10.35. Or you can just leave your screen running and walk out of the picture. Yeah, That's fine, too. Whatever you want to do. All right. I have a question. Yeah. What's the effect of, like, using, if your starter isn't ripe, is that... Like, how did, how would that affect it in the end? Like, would it make much difference or is it just gonna feed off what's, what you feed it here? Yeah, so I think there's, well, there's kind of three phases, right, of the starter, if you think about it. It's like the unfed phase, right? So, you know, like right after you take it out of the fridge and hasn't eaten all week, there's like the, um, I guess you'd say like the mature or like the ripe phase, which is when it's, after you fed it, and it rises like all the way up, like doubles in size or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then there's sort of this like afterward, like this falling phase, which is after it's sat up there as long as it can go and it starts to just start to collapse. And at that point, it's like a lot of the air is like kind of coming out of it and stuff. Um, and so the ideal time to use your starter for baking is going to be when it's almost at its peak, when it's like just on the way up and it's like almost at full strength. Um, but it's pretty hard to time that. And like, I know that mine, for instance, if I wanted to hit that, that time on this, uh, I would have had to like get up at like five in the morning to feed mine. So that way by 10 o'clock, it was like ready to go, but nobody wants to do that. So, um, if you use it like before or after that peak, it probably, it'll be fine. It's going to do its thing, right? It's going to just get in here. It's going to start eating at the flour and, uh, start, um, fermenting. It just might not be as fast or as vigorous, but it will, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, this, this is just another feeding of the sourdough, right? This is yeah. just the water. So, um, so when you put it in here, you're just giving it another feeding. And so maybe it'll take a little bit longer, whatever. I've budgeted it about four hours for this, what we call the bulk fermentation phase. And that's, I think, going to be plenty of time for even like a kind of sluggish starter to get energized. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, and like we had talked about, I mean, we talked about this all every, every time is just like temperature and how that has a big impact on it. So if you're feeling like it's sluggish, get it in a warmer place. Um, if you feel like it's going too fast, you can cool it down by leaving it somewhere that's a little cooler and that'll slow down the activity. I have a question. Yes. I still see people sort of poking at their bowls. Yeah. Do they need to be letting it rest right now? Um, I guess so. I mean, if you're done mixing, you can just stop mixing. I don't think there's anything wrong with like mixing it some more, but I, I don't think that's going to help you either. So once it's, once it's all mixed and it's all fully incorporated, um, you should be good. Do we need to cover this or it's okay uncovered? doesn't matter. Uh, I'll just cover mine because like, I don't know, it's not like rising rain right now, so it doesn't matter a whole lot, but I'll just leave that covered for the moment. Um, this is a good time now to get your ingredients in order for the next phase of this. So if you've got a few minutes here, um, we're going to need, for the next phase, we're going to need 330 grams of flour. So you can feel free to measure that out. We'll be mixing this in. We'll be mixing this in a little bit. And then one tablespoon of salt. So I measured out a tablespoon. I came up with 19 grams. So I got that. Put it in a little, little bowl separately. And, um, and then we get this business with the barley malt syrup. I don't know what barley malt syrup even is. Um, and I wasn't about to go find it. And it's because I only need two tablespoons of it. So I'm going with this idea of mixing honey and molasses together. If you only have honey or you only have molasses, I'm sure that's totally fine too. Um, so I mixed, I just took a tablespoon of each and put those together. Does how much flour, sorry, how much flour was it again? Uh, so put aside 330 grams for your phase, phase two here. Don't mix that in yet though. Just leave it on the Yeah. Sauce. 
And then a tablespoon each of those? Yeah, basically a tablespoon of salt, tablespoon of, of honey, and a tablespoon of molasses. But not mixed together. Yeah, you could mix them together if you want, I guess. They're all going to go in the bowl together in, in the end. All right. Where's my starter? Oh, it's over here. I guess this is as good as time as any to, um, I'm just going to feed my starter. Like Lizzie pointed out, I, that actually used up like a lot of mine. So that's crazy. I didn't expect that. I thought I did the math right because we did, we did uh, three, we did a hundred grams starter, hundred gram. like last night when we fed it, we did hundred grams starter, hundred grams of water, hundred grams flour. So I thought that would give me about three times a day. So. Um, okay. Question about, oh. Yeah, sorry. go ahead. So if I'm feeding my starter now too, because there was less in there, can I give it a little more flour and water just to, so it's back up to its normal? Yeah, that's actually what I'm going to do. Cause I only got like, two tablespoons left in here so yeah. I'm going to put in like I don't know, another 50 grams each or 60 grams each um just try to keep that ratio of like equal part of flour and water okay all right I've been feeding mine Trader Joe's unbleached all-purpose flour because uh, I don't want to use it like King Arthur on just feeding this guy you know it's desperate times All right. So you're feeding the starter now just before you put it back in the fridge? Is that what's happening? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I thought I would have a lot more left over, and I was planning on just going straight to the fridge, but uh, apparently I don't, don't have that much left over. So. Can you remind us how much salt and how much honey again? Yep, it's going to be uh, one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of honey, one tablespoon of molasses. If you don't have molasses, you just do two tablespoons of honey. That's right. Cool. Mix this guy back up, and then we'll go in the fridge for another uh, for another week. Unless I decide to do some mid midweek baking. Uh, does anybody have a name for their starter? I don't know if we've heard from anybody of uh, names. I did read some articles online of like some pretty ridiculous names. I, I don't remember. We have, we have a name, but pretty obscure reference. So. Let's hear it. If anyone gets it, if anyone can get the reference, I'll send you something. Um, it's Gina Linetti. That's Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah. Do you know why though? Oh, I don't know. So one of the characters, Boyle. Remember when his, their parents start dating? Oh, yeah. And his mom, his, the like thousand year old starter in the Boyle family gets left to Gina, who doesn't even like, she doesn't even know what it is. <laughs> and, and it becomes a bargaining power for her. I thought that was really funny. That's awesome. That is excellent. <laughs> Anyone else have names? Well, you gotta come up with something that's very important. Yeah, you can talk to the internet for entertaining names or come up with your own obscure names. Ours, I think I mentioned on another call, is uh, Sully, so, right? Yeah. We live in South Boston. It's the the home of the Irish, so. I thought you would pick that name because it was uh, Sully from the Monsters, Inc. Oh, you're Inc. right, you're yeah. right. Is Monsters, it, Inc. Because I would sure. sometimes refer to the uh, starter as the monster in the fridge, so Monsters, Inc., Sully. We name all of our bikes and That's a good one. Yeast. The double entendre. Right, exactly. What are your bike names? <laughs> well, my, uh, we'll see, we can play the same game if anybody knows what the reference is. I know, this is be pretty obvious, I think. Yeah, probably. Uh, Shadowfax is the name of my road bike. 
Anybody? Shadow facts? Come on. Come on! Ride like the wind, shadow facts. Is it from like Lord of the Rings or something? Yes. Oh my gosh, who are all you people? <laughs> I thought they knew you all. I thought they knew you. <laughs> Right. Yes, Shadow Facts is Gandalf's horse, and he's very fast and silver, and so that's what my bike is named. That's right. And then I've got, um, I had gone for a while, I had gone with like a Disney theme for my bikes, so I have a black, uh, like a black and gray road bike uh, named Ursula. <laughs> that's so good. So that's the, the bad guy from The Little Mermaid. And then I've got my... Um, my around town bike, if any of you have seen it, I think a few of you have seen it, it's pretty cool because it doesn't have a, um, it doesn't have a chain, it has a, a carbon belt, and uh, so I named it Wally. Wally. Like... Wally. <laughs> are you, are you, were you a little nervous naming your bike after a villain? Like it might turn against you? I, I, I like the idea of going with villains. I was like going to come with this whole theme of naming all my bikes after villains. <laughs> I, I kind of, I mean, you get some good villains to work with. Like, um, if I had like a black and white one, I could be Jafar. Wait, what was the one? I mean, Chris, oh, Chris Cavill Cavill is black and but the white. problem is, good if one. you said it, we would have that song in our head yeah. for, you know. Mm -hmm. I previously had a bike named Nemo. Ooh. Um, Rocky. <laughs> Diablo Rojo is my current bike, the Red Devil. We're supposed to be baking right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm curious as to, so I haven't heard much from Matt. So Matt, uh, thank you for joining here. You're the, Matt's the new, new picker on uh, The rookie. Yeah. So how, first time picking with sourdough, or, or a starter at all. All right. <laughs> You're bold. I'm uh, trying. Well, I figure there's support in numbers, right? It could make it ill. You know, I would be freaking out a lot more if I didn't have somebody guiding me through it, right? <laughs> it's yeah. another great grandchild of Dolores's stutter. <laughs> That's right. And it and it actually behaved just like you were describing yours. So again, I would have been panicking when it was runny and every and it actually rose very high overnight and collapsed back down. I was like, okay, this is okay. I'm good. This mm -hmm. is a good start. So. Yeah. Yeah. And this is Jody that sit down in front, right? Can you say hi? Hi. Jody just got, is very excited. You were talking about naming bikes and it made me want to ask Jody if she's going to name the skateboard we just bought her, mm -hmm. right? Hasn't even arrived yet, but we got a unicorn skateboard. That's cool. I always feel like you have to get to know the object before you name it. Like, you know, take it for a ride, see how it feels, how does it make you feel, and then come up with a name. Is that a good idea? Do you want to tell them what kind of skateboard it is? Unicorn. It's a unicorn skateboard. Excellent. Pretty cool. So, but we're very excited. I actually, I was curious. This is so far afield from the group, but I'm curious. So we just renovated our house. In fact, it's not really done yet, uh, but we stormed our way back in because of the virus and we wanted to sort of hunker down here. But we actually got a steam oven uh, that we have no experience with at all. But it crossed my mind that it might actually be a good tool for something like this, where the bagels should be boiled and have moisture and then get baked in the end. So if this goes well, I may actually on my own make a batch where I found a recipe online using the steam oven. So let's see how that goes. It'd be very interesting. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So after the quarantine lifts, we're coming over to your house for baking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd say the kitchen is like far nicer than, well, certainly nicer than anything we've ever had before, but it's not actually done yet. We don't even have a backsplash. If you look over my shoulder, you can see wires on the wall and just, uh, so we're, we're definitely roughing it a bit in the, in the midst of some upgrades, you know. Okay. Last week, David was literally like, professional chefs have steam ovens. None of us have steam of it. <laughs> well, I'm a professional chef. That's a <laughs> right. It's been really great so far, I have to say. Like just I thought it would be like steaming vegetables and things like that, but it's ridiculous the amount of things that it comes like ready to do. Like our we hard boiled eggs perfectly. Perfectly oh. easily. Good what enough. else? We've done fish, we've done a lot of fish in it already. It's been great. It's been really cool. Wow. Um, cool. Anyway, it's an adventure. Put on the list for our next place. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm grinding uh, kosher salt to be a uh, table salt size as we talk. Sorry. All right. 
Nice. I think we also have uh, Abby online. Abby has come to some of these before, but hasn't baked yet with us until today. That's right. Today is also my first attempt baking with starter. So I'm a little nervous, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> I think you'll do fine. And you, Abby had made her, her starter on her own too. So she's one of those people. Yeah, we got a few of those people on the line here, right? I think Lizzie made her own and Dan made his own and Lucy. Yeah, so, so accomplished. Yeah, Those yeah. Um, I have a question. I heard, um, I think it was Mark? Yeah, Matt say that you're grinding kosher salt into table salt. Is it okay if I use just kosher salt? That's a great question. I didn't realize that. I'm, yeah. I'm doing it. I actually have no perfect. choice unless I smash it. <laughs> well, we live next door and we have a giant thing of salt. So if, you know. <laughs> I'll just, I'm going to go with the kosher salt. I'll just see. I'm not you finding it strictly for surface area. As I understand it, like it'll, you know, dissolve better if you, uh, the smaller surface. Yeah. Or the larger surface area, smaller granules. Yeah. I think that it's going to, it will make a whole lot of difference um, because this is going to be in here for like four hours. So hopefully it's all going to be dissolved anyway. We're not using it like super quick. So yeah, I think it'll be fine. Okay. You had a choice, probably not, but if you don't yeah. have a choice, probably fine. All right, we still got a few more minutes before I want to start mixing this thing in. Um, let's talk about what we're doing after this. So we're going to mix this guy up, um, and then this afternoon we're going to shape it. So that'll be fun. That'll be a fun little experience. Um, I think it should be pretty easy. We're basically just going to make a bunch of little, a bunch of little um, dough balls, and then shape it into donut slash bagel shape. Uh, and then tomorrow we're going to, so we're going to let them rise in the fridge overnight. So just the same thing as we did with the loaf of bread we made last week. So that you have room in your fridge this afternoon to put a tray of bagels in. So get creative, do some refrigerator uh, Tetris. Tetris and figure out how you can slide a tray in there to rest overnight. And then tomorrow we will boil the bagels and then bake them. That's an interesting thing about bagels that you don't really do from for really any other bread i think you do for pretzels right but um so we'll boil them with some salt or some uh, sugar and some baking soda and then that is what helps give them like the kind of signature crust and look of them the kind of shininess and then we'll get them right in the oven uh, because not all of us have steam ovens so we want to capture that water that's on them before it evaporates off or soaks in i'm curious on if the steam oven because it's probably a pretty different effect, right? Like if you're boiling it and you put it in water, it's fully surrounded, it's actually in water and then baked as opposed to being surrounded by steam. So I'm, yeah. I'm curious if you do it with the boil method, Matt, and then you try it out with the steam and give us a side-by-side -side comparison. Yeah, it seems to go in a different direction right off the bat in terms of like, I don't think it actually, the recipe I found anyway, which had nice looking pictures of bagels, um, it went, it did skip the boil and just had like a 100% humidity proofing. So we'll see. Huh. Yeah, I feel like the boil is going to be an important part to develop the right type of crust. And because especially you're putting baking soda in there too. So, you know, your steam is not going to, you're not going to inject baking soda steam in the oven. It seems that way to me too. Yeah. Yeah. But that is, that oven will be cool. It'll be really helpful for doing things like um, baguettes and stuff. So last week we did uh, a big, uh, country loaf of boule and so everybody was using Dutch ovens so people that had Dutch ovens were using that people who didn't were like putting ice cubes in the oven to make steam so oh, cool yeah so there's other ways around it but I think that having like a steam injected oven is going to be cool it's going to be helpful when you're making all sorts of other things um, like yeah different breeds and things that just don't fit in a Dutch oven we actually had a social distancing interaction with Alice to get the starter and she gave us some of her boule and it was great it came out really well so, good job, Alice. Yeah, yeah. We ate um, a couple of pieces of our bull this morning with breakfast because it was sliced up and in the freezer, and so we just toasted it, and it was. Yeah, if we hadn't put it on the freezer, we would have eaten the entire thing like last Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. All right. Oh, actually, hang on, uh, Kevin. You guys made a bull last week, but didn't come back, right? Did you make? Did you guys make one? Uh, we did, and it was amazing. It barely lasted 12 hours. Um, I'll 
that we're definitely back for, for good. Good, um, good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just like, sometimes we're like, come back if you want, but it's okay if you don't. And then when people don't come back, I'm like, Oh, what if it, what if it turned out terribly and they were too embarrassed to come back? So Lizzie was on here. We saw in the backyard and hers didn't come out very good. And she's like, I'm not going to come on. Like, no, you need to come on the call so that if somebody else had a bad bread, they don't feel like they're the only one who, who didn't. Because I was the only one. <laughs> you were, but I didn't feel too bad because you already made a really good one, like four hours before that. <laughs> I mean, I still felt bad, but you had <laughs> You had had success. Well, and I'll, show you the pig. I'll show you all the, I figured I'm a mix of Great British Bake Off and Nailed It from Netflix. So <laughs> it can either come out really bad or really good. <laughs> Lizzie also made a Swiss roll, a Nutella Swiss roll last weekend and gave us a piece of that. Yeah, with was, homemade Nutella. Yeah, OMG. A, a plus. Yeah. That's a fun one. That sounds amazing. Yeah. It pays to be friends with your neighbors, I'll tell you that now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey Dave, I have a question about um, uh, the bread that we baked last weekend. So I noticed I, I baked a couple, and I noticed that like around the edges, it's not like a perfect circle. It's a little bit dimply, and I'm thinking that I'm either when I'm shaping it, I'm not making the bread taut enough, or I'm making it too taut. Um, how taut? Because I know like you, when you were folding it, you were essentially like you fold four folds to make it sort of taut. Yeah. Um, do you really make it like? Uh, if I do four folds and it's not really taut, do I do more or should I just be folding a little bit less? Yeah, so um, my combo was like a little bit like, I would say like dimply or like almost like pleated around the edge. And I wasn't sure if that was maybe maybe because of like surface tension, like you said, or maybe it's just because when I put it in with the, um, the parchment paper, the parchment paper kind of ruffled up around the edges. I wasn't sure if that led to that. Um, That's a really good point. Yeah, so what I would uh, think is, that you could, so when you do those folds and, you, and, it's, and it's on the table and it's seam side down at that point, what you can do and what I do sometimes is just kind of use your hands to cup it and shape it and drag it around in circles. Um, and that really helps to circle it, to like make a more even circle. So cool. you that, and as you do that, you're kind of like scooping the, scooping it underneath and that's building tension on top, so. Here's a you picture of Lucy's well. bread. That looks to me like a um, parchment, paper. parchment paper dimple, but that's also a really good looking bread. I gotta yeah. say, so yeah. I would. <laughs> yeah. That's like, I wouldn't complain about that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, um, and then my other question is: so you just fed your starter and put it in the fridge. Is that what you want to do? You want to feed it and immediately put it in the fridge for the next week, or do you want to feed it and let it rise and then put it in the fridge? Mine's actually out on the table right now. I didn't put mine away. So yeah, I would, uh, what I'll do for this one is I'll just let it um, be at room temperature for whatever, four or five hours, whatever. I'll let it do its thing and then I'll put it in the fridge. I don't know if it makes a whole lot of difference, but that's what I always do. Cool, thanks. All right, our time has gone for us to move forward yeah. unless folks have other questions. Let's do it, let's get to phase two of this. All right. So I'm going back to the stand mixer here. So I got, well, let's see, let's get this stuff in here. So first I'm going to mix in, check this recipe. Yeah, cool. All right, so I'm just gonna mix in my salt. Gonna mix in um, the molasses honey mixture. I'll choose this thing, Jenny. Yeah, so the salt goes in the bowl, the molasses honey mixture is going in the bowl too. Get that in there. It's thick like molasses. All right, and then I'm going to take the last bit of my flour here. So I got the 330 grams of flour, and I'm going to mix that in. Boom. All right, I'm switching over to the hook. This is my dough hook. I'm just going to mix this a little bit um, by hand first because if I put this in the kitchen aid, I've had these problems before where all the flour that's on the top goes poof, and goes all over my kitchen. So I'm not going to do that. My sister and brother-in-law um, now call that the David at their house. If they use their kitchen aid and send flour around the kitchen, they say, I pulled a David. Yeah, I really don't appreciate that being associated with me <laughs> of all things. <laughs> Of all the dumb things I've done in my life, actually, that's one of the. Put all the flour in, sorry. 
Yeah, so now all of your flowers should be in there. Um, there shouldn't be any more on the counter or anything. Yeah. Thank you. Now, all right, I'm gonna put this, so okay, so now what this says here is, um, you're gonna mix this by, we're gonna mix this for five minutes on a medium speed on here. Or if you don't have one of these guys, you're just gonna stir it all in and mix as much as you can, and then you have to knead it by hand and pour it out on the counter and knead it by hand. And we're going for five minutes on this. So I'm gonna flip this thing on, I'm gonna mute myself, so you don't have to listen to me, but feel free to yell out questions and I can answer them. We're gonna be on mute for five minutes. I guess so, unless they want to hear this KitchenAid roll for five minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's, yeah. All right. Hey, David. I have a question. Do you tell? Uh, sorry, in the stand mixer, how, how quickly should it be uh, going? So the instructions, it said medium. So I, okay. here's the thing is when I'm making dough, I wouldn't put it up to, so what did mine go up to, like 10 or something? Yeah, yeah. I'm at like two, because honestly, you, you don't want to need dough at like five or six, I think you'll actually destroy the motor on the thing. So. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. all right, thank you. Cool. Yeah, so mine's going, this is the cool thing about stand mixer, is I could just hang out on the couch here, maybe I'll pour myself a drink, I don't know. I can clean up the kitchen at the same time. Um, this is an interesting recipe, so, because remember when we made all of our other stuff, we didn't actually have to knead it at all. Um, I don't know, to be honest, I don't know if this is strictly necessary, but this is what the recipe says to do, so I'm just kind of inclined to do it and see what happens. My only theory here is that when you think about the bread we made last week, it uh, had these huge air holes in it, right? And it was a really big open structure. Bagels don't have that, right? Bagels have a much tighter structure. So I'm thinking that doing all this kneading is what is going to give it that tight structure. That's my theory. We'll find out. I see Josh doing this, the slap and fold kneading technique. That's, that's pretty good. That's impressive. My dough is still a little sticky. Should I be adding a little more flour? I don't think so, because the sourdough um, doughs that we make are always going to be pretty sticky, um, which is going to make it tough to knead. And I think that that amount of hydration and stuff is what really is, helps the, uh, the, the sourdough develop. <laughs> Yeah, no, you, Alan, you don't have a stand mixer, right? You're doing it all by hand? I have a stand mixer, but it's the classic cake one. So I don't know if it'll, the um, attachments will work for dough. Gotcha. 
Sorry. And Dave, you're using. Oh, sorry. This one. Oh yeah, that wouldn't work at all. That would get that would get bent for sure for certain. What were you gonna ask, Lucy? Never mind. I answered my own question. It was about the mixer. Cool. Um, all right. I might try to need mine by hand for a minute just to show you guys what it's like to do that, because it's, it's gonna be kind of fun. All right. Hold on. Mine doesn't look like that in the stand mixer. It's like all just hooked onto the hook. Um, in that case, I would say like, you know, scrape it down and then let it uh, let it go again. Can you show us one more time what it looks like? I was not looking. The... Yeah, so it's on, if you put it into gallery view, you should be able to see. And that looks like, that looks pretty smooth actually, huh? There we go. All right. Huh. So actually I hit five minutes on, on this thing. So I'm done meeting. How does mine look? They would hands. Um, I don't know. I mean, that looks that looks pretty good to me, actually, Dan. I think that probably you can stop now. What do you think? Yeah. I think it's holding together really well. Mine keeps like creeping up over the top of the the dough hook. Yeah, you know, actually, I think in this instruction they said something about that. Like, if that happens, you want to put this over? I have stuff in my hands. Um, let's see. Where was it? If the dough is still a little sticky, add a quarter cup of flour, a tablespoon at a time. So you could do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Does your dough hook, my dough hook kind of has this like shield on it uh, that prevents stuff from coming up over the top. I don't know if maybe yours doesn't have that. No, it, it has that. It's going up over that too. I can't tell if this is sticky. I guess it's still sticky. Should I add a little? Sure. Yeah, I guess at this point you kind of have to just, you know, Use your intuitions or whatever. It should be it should be pretty tacky. So I can feel my, mine's pretty tacky, but it's not. Um, I can it's not actually sticking like to my hands when I my hand out. We add a little bit of just like a tablespoon, get it mixed in, and see how that looks and feels. I went, mine went up over the a little bit as well, but I can pull it off pretty easily, and it's also kind of the consistency that Dave is describing. Where it's like tacky, but not, I don't know. I guess it's a little sticky. All right. So you don't, I'm taking mine out of the bowl. You don't have to do this though. I just want to play with mine a little bit and show you what Josh is actually doing. Maybe Josh can even give us a demonstration because this dough, you're going to find you can't really knead this like you would with a lot of pizza doughs and stuff because it's so sticky and wet. Um, so a lot of times what people do here is they, because you can see it's like stuck to the counter even. I'm going to tilt that down so you can see the counter. So it's like stuck to the counter and get it off. Um, so a lot of times what people will do is you want to use like, you can use this in combination with your bench scraper, scoop it up into your hand, and then slap it down on the table. And as I do that, it stretches out and then flop it over. So this is called a slap and fold. And uh, I think it's kind of fun to do. And you can do that with these high hydration doughs instead of like kneading it in a circle like you normally would. Good way to build some arm strength too. Get that guy in there. Rotate it, slap it, fold it, boom. Get some aggression out, you know. <laughs> Stupid Corona. Yeah. But this is actually looking totally really well developed. It's holding its shape well. Um, still pretty sticky as you can see, it's sticking to my hand, but I think this is good enough to go into the bowl and it's gonna rest now. So, ugh, and the bowl we go. Just put into a lightly oiled skin. Yes. Sorry. Um, I did mine by hand and it's pretty sticky. Should I remove it from the bowl and like add a tiny flower and slap it around a little bit? <laughs> um, well, you did say yours was pretty runny before. I, you know, I guess that's kind of your, your choice. You saw like, and I hope you saw in the video how sticky mine was, but it's like, you know, like, I mean, it sticks like this when I try to pick it up and. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't tell that. Um, I guess it looks fine. So if you feel like it's too wet, you know, for certain, feel like you can add a little bit of flour, a tablespoon or something like that. Yeah, okay. and if you end up doing that slap and fold thing, you don't really actually have to add more flour. Eventually, the, from what I understand, and it does work, uh, 
over time when you keep slapping it and folding it, it builds it up and it just like gives it a little, makes it significantly less sticky. It just forms okay. It, cool. If you're doing that way. Thank you. Yeah. Would it be pretty stuck? I mean, I can pull it out of my bowl, but it's still like pretty sticky to the bottom of the bowl, or did yeah. yours come pretty easily? So that's so mine is is pretty is is definitely really sticky and stuck to the bottom bowl. So here's actually this is going to be a good point. So Jenny brought this up is that the recipe actually says to put it in a lightly oiled bowl. I I'm not going to do that. I'm a rebel. I don't know. You guys can do whatever you want. Don't let me stop you. Um, I you know like we did this before with the boule and stuff and with the focaccia. You remember it was really sticky. It, it gets in there, it gets stuck to the bowl, and uh, I think that's totally fine. I don't know. I'm not going to bother oiling it and making more more cleanup work for myself. Um, cool. So mine is ready to rest. I think some, there's some people still slapping and folding. Oh, I see some Alan doing some really aggressive slapping and folding there. It's awesome. <laughs> she like she had like over her head like like you know this is like lucha libre like wrestler style like. Ugh! I like it. I like that enthusiasm. Um, what we're gonna do after this? So now this is gonna go and uh, it's gonna ferment. So now we're gonna ferment this thing for four hours. That's gonna help develop the flavor and it's gonna help develop the texture of this. And um, so same thing as the bread last week, for every half hour, four times, we're gonna go and stretch and fold it. So I'll just do a little recap of a stretch and fold for, for my new people here. So basically, you're gonna have this thing in the bowl and it's gonna be like a little bit, um, it's a little bit. Uh, Sorry, like, David, are we transferring it to a new bowl or it's the bowl we've been mixing in? I'm leaving it in the bowl I've been mixing it in. Okay. So. Um, so you can see mine's like in there. It's, it's a little rough. It's all cohesive though. It's all one piece. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is once every half hour, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to stretch and fold it. So I got to do this like this though. Um, you just grab a corner. So actually you, you would wet your hand. I don't have any water over here, but you wet your hand because otherwise it's going to stick to your hand. And then grab a corner of this dough, stretch it up, fold it over. Hopefully it doesn't stick to your hand too much. Do that four times. You can do like on the north, south, east, and west. And, uh, just rotate that thing around. And uh, you just have to do that once. So just one, one go around and then you're gonna put the cover back on and let it sit for another half an hour. And that is a stretch and fold. And that helps develop the gluten and develop the strength of the dough. And pay attention to, as, as you do this, pay attention to what the dough looks like now, what it looks like a half an hour from now when it's rested, what it looks like two hours from now after you've stretched and folded a bunch of times, you'll see it's gonna to totally change its character. So. That's it. David, so, you didn't oil your bowl? I did not, yeah. I mean, if you want, feel free to do it. I, I think, I personally think it's probably gonna be unnecessary, but I haven't made the recipe before. I'm crazy, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, the recipe says oil the bowl, oil the bowl, and he's like, I'm not gonna oil the bowl, so. Yeah. Whatever that's, you're. That's one more bowl for me to clean. I don't wanna do that. Um, so we're, are we ready for a recap of what's happening next? Sure. All yeah. right, well, so, so actually, before we do a recap, anybody got any questions as to what we're, I don't know. Or if you're questions? questioning what you have in front of you and want to hold it up or anything. Was yours like pretty stiff? So at, right now it is pretty, it is pretty stiff. Like it's got a lot of strength to it. It is pretty stiff. And that's because it's been kneaded for five minutes straight. Um, I think that in a half an hour, you'll see it relax a lot more. So. Okay. Oh yeah, look at Alon's. It looks good now. The the stretch yeah. yeah coming along and then should we cover it once it's in the bowl yeah totally so when you put this thing in the bowl cover it otherwise it'll dry out the top so i'm going to cover mine i got a lid for mine uh if not you can use plastic wrap beeswax wrap thing or whatever um just be aware that if you know if you're laying plastic wrap right over on top of your on top of the dough it's going to stick to that so you know you can figure out a way to not do that but that's it. I don't put it on something that's going to seal. So this this is like kind of loose on here. Um, if you put it on like a locking Tupperware or whatever, you run the risk of kind of ruining the Tupperware or, or ruining the locking mechanism because it's going to ferment. It's going to make more gas. It's going to need to, uh, a way to vent that gas. Cool. My brother-in-law or Hank's sister's boyfriend does. He puts a towel and then a cutting board on top. I always like how that was a good trick. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Yeah. Cutting board stops it from dipping in, right? And then... Yeah. Yeah. I know my mom throws a blanket over hers. <laughs> Let's that chill out. 
Um, so we're all coming back here. 2.30. At 2.30. That's right. With cocktails. Wait, no. If you want. Yeah, if you want. I made it Saturday. Let's do it. Saturday. Uh, Dan and Sarah, I expect cocktails. They probably already have. Like, <laughs> Sarah's like, yeah! <laughs> There will be cocktails. We were actually thinking about making them during this, but our hands are too too busy. No, it's fair enough. Maybe we should integrate that when we have, you know, like time while we're waiting, we all like make group cocktails. That's a good idea. Do a cocktail recipe in between. Um, so we're coming back here at 2.30 and that's when we're gonna um, shape the bagels, get them into bagel form and then put them in a tray to be uh, in the fridge and done for the yeah. until tomorrow morning. Between now and then, every half hour, well, we've got... No, so I actually put it in the email, but basically, it's like, um, what did I put? I said like 11, 11.30, 12, 12.30, stretch a fold. So actually, it's 11 o'clock right now. I don't know, maybe, maybe move that up by half hour. So 11.30, 12, 12.30, and 1. one. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do a little modification here. So 11.30, 12, 12.30, and 1, do your stretch and folds. That's it. And then we'll be back here at 2.30. Yep. So 11.30, 12, 12.30, 1 o'clock. Do four folds each of those times, and we'll be back here at 2.30. Cool. Perfect. Sounds good. See you later. Bye-bye. Right. Okay. Adios. Later. Thanks for coming this morning, everybody. <laughs>